chaos I hear. So I've been really into the sea life in Tarja's lately. And this one is a whale pattern by Judy Gale Roberts. And it's one of her free patterns on her website. And what's really cool is she not only gives you the pattern, but she gives you detailed instructions on how to go about making the intarsia. So if you've never made an intarsia before, this would be an awesome pattern to start with. I'm gonna make this one because I've made the dolphins and then I made a whale a while ago and I just ordered the humpback whale from Judy Gale Roberts. Looking forward to making that one soon. And I made some miniature orange dolphins also. So I'm just loving the sea life stuff. So the whale, I'm excited to get going. So I used blue pine before and holly. And so I have remnants of the blue pine and then I have remnants of the holly, but there's a part on the whale where it has some um, either wonder wheel markings or wood burn markings or sanding markings that you want to do for that part of the whale. I thought it'd be really cool to use some spalted maple there. It has the lines in it and stuff. So, yeah. So I'm gonna get my sticker machine out, my creative station, and make these into stickers real quick like, so I can put them on the wood. I cut out all the pieces and arranged them onto a piece of paper. This is just to save on sticker machine sticker making material. And I wanted to see how many pieces I could fit on one sheet of paper. Okay, I need to do a light coat. 3M77 over the fronts of these, which is nearly impossible, but I think it can be done. Maybe, maybe. And they fly away. Someone told me to use something to hold it down like a chopstick. Uh, what I've learned since then is to spray the light coat onto the paper and then put your pieces face down on that. That's probably too much, but we will deal with it when that time comes. Then flip them over and attach them to the paper. Okay. All right. I make sure that the patterns are down like that because we want them to go face up, which is, you know, they're upside down on here. So face up is this way. And we just stick it in the machine. Spin a room like that. Ah, stickers. And then this super long one I'm just doing by itself. Make sure it will go through. I might be able to fit this in there, right in there with it. There. All the way to the tip. Stickers. Alrighty, let's put those stickers on the woods. So we take off this top plastic layer gently. And then we take off this layer. Now the fronts of these are a bit sticky from when I sprayed them to put them on the paper. See, it just stuck to my elbow. <laughs> so these are a bit sticky from when I attached them to the paper. But what I found is you can rub that stickiness right off. And 
these pieces won't have it because I didn't have to put any sticky stuff on because I made them their own sticker. Taking note of the recommended grain direction. Give me pretty tips. Then I cut all those pieces out on the scroll saw. And the light on my scroll saw makes this look like I'm sawing in the dark, but the shop is fully lighted. And I sanded off the fuzzies after cutting each piece. Here are all of the pieces. And here they are with all the papers taken off. I made a sanding shim by tracing the whale on a piece of hardboard and then cut that out on the scroll saw. Not sure why the lighting is different, but I like this better. Hmm, weird. Then I sanded off the odd fuzzies that form on this hardboard stuff. Then I flipped the whale over and I added double stick tape to all of the pieces except the side fin and the top fin. Ideally, you want to expose the tape and put the sanding shim over the pieces and attach them all at the same time but my wood is different thicknesses, so I added them piece by piece. Then I sanded them all together with 100 grit on the pneumatic drum sander. And when I had it shaped to where I wanted them, it took some pieces off the shim and sanded them individually. I referred to Judy's guide as I went and used a pencil mark where I wanted to sand and where pieces were lining up against each other. And when I had things where I liked them, I took it to the flex drum with 220 grit and went over everything. Then I drilled the hole for the eye, which I really need to remember to do this when the wood is flat before shaping it. And here's a nice clear shot of my forearm. Then I hand sanded and softened the edge of each piece. into the eye or I can use a little tiny piece of ebony and that's what I think I'll do. I'm just going to try to shape it into this the same shape as this dowel and then make the eye out of that. So I sanded that little piece of ebony to the shape I wanted it and it was much easier than trying to hold it and saw it into shape. on my grinder. I have one side is the flex shaft, one side is the wonder wheel, and that is something that Judy Gale Roberts developed so that you can texture your intarsias. And it also burnishes wood. Burnish the eyeball. I'm using Old Master's Pickling White on my holly wood. This stuff is wiped on and wiped off and in about 30 minutes your white wood is super white and it stays that way. I applied this to the back belly and the mandible of the whale. And it only takes one coat. I used a paper towel to wipe it off until it's dry and let it set up for about six hours. 
There's a visitor here this morning. Neat. I love its color. So, that white really got white. Cool. And now we're going to put on the clear satin. Yeah. Now I'll just put it right there. Maybe a little more. Next, I used the Old Masters Poly Gel. I used a rag and wiped it on, rubbing it into each piece, including the white pieces. And then I wiped it off with a paper towel until it was dry. And I applied three coats, waiting six hours between each coat. I ended up using the sanding shim for my backer board. I wanted to put a verse on the back, but it is hard to see on the hard board, so I put it on a small piece of one quarter inch plywood. I chose Genesis 120. Then God said, let the water be filled with living things. I also put my logo on there and signed and dated it. Then I glued it to the piece of hardboard. Time to glue! Yay! I put all of the pieces onto the backer and I inserted the eye. But I only glued one piece and let that set up for about 20 minutes. Then I glued two more pieces, one below that setup piece and one above it, and let those set up. And I did that with all of the pieces until they were all glued on. Hey, the compressor is on, can you hear it? It's outside now. Hubby put it outside so it's not so loud. Woo! I love it. All right, the eye. I'm going to try something different and put a little dot of paint on the eye. I used enamel paint and I really liked how it looked, but it didn't last long. So that white paint didn't work. It melted away when I put on the crystal clear. So now the crystal clear is dry and I'm gonna try some acrylic white paint. Just put a little dab right up there to be that catch light, like this. There, okay, woo! There, now we'll let that dry. Awesome. Then I held it up to see where the hanger should go and marked where it allowed it to hang how I liked it. Then I added a sawtoothed hanger. I drilled some tiny pilot holes, then drove in two tiny screws to hold it in. Well, the whale is all finished and the white pickling, wow, did that make that white or what? So cool. And I put the little acrylic paint on that eye and I think I like, you know, making the hole and doing the actual dowel with like holly or aspen or something better. Um, I need to think about it before I start cutting the eyeball out because I think it'd be easier to put the hole in the piece of wood before I cut the, the little circle. Anywho, the spalted maple, I love it! It looks so cool right there for the, the whatever that is on the whale. Yeah, I'm not a fan of these, uh, the white that showed through on the blue pine, um, but it, I think it works, I don't know. The blue pine I have, like one side looks like that, and then the other side, see the, the white in there, or the, the lighter color, which I really like, but I was hoping, you can see how deep it is there. So on my piece of wood, that was underneath, and when I sanded down, then it exposed it. So it kind of looks cool on the fin tail right there. But anyway, 
I wasn't hoping for that <laughs> to happen, but it did. Anyway, this is a free pattern by Judy Gale Roberts. It's on her website and she has a little booklet on step-by-step -step process of how to do this. So if you've never done intarsia before, I recommend trying this. It's, she's got it all right there, teaching you everything. And I'll leave a link in the description box below so you can get to that pretty easily. I'm really enjoying these Sea Life intarsias and I have a bunch more that I wanna do. I might do something different in between the next Sea Life. Uh, yeah, so. So thanks for joining me, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye!